Chapter 10 He couldn't believe how quickly the light disappeared. From the glade proper, the forest didn't look that big, maybe a couple of acres. Yet the trees were tall with sturdy trunks. Packed tightly together, the canopy up above thick with leaves. The air around him had a greenish muted hue, as if only several minutes of twilight remained in the day. It was somehow beautiful and creepy, all at once. Moving as fast as he could, Thomas crashed through the heavy foliage, thin branches slapping at his face. He ducked to avoid a low-hanging limb. Almost falling, reaching out, he caught hold of a branch and swung himself forward to regain his balance. A thick bed of leaves and fallen twigs crunched underneath him. All the while, his eyes stayed riveted on the beetle blade scuttling across the forest floor. Deeper it went, its red light glowing brighter as the surroundings darkened. Thomas had charged thirty or forty feet into the woods, dodging and ducking and losing ground with every second, when the beetle blade jumped onto a particularly large tree and scooted up its trunk. But by the time Thomas reached the tree, any sign of the creature had vanished. It had disappeared deep within the foliage, almost as if it had never existed. He'd lost the sucker. Shuck it, Thomas whispered, almost as a joke. Almost, as strange as it seemed, the word felt natural on his lips, like he was already morphing into a glader. A twig snapped somewhere to his right and he jerked his head in that direction. He stilled his breath, listened. Another snap, this time louder, almost like someone had broken a stick over their knee. Who's there? Thomas yelled out, a tingle of fear shooting across his shoulders. His voice bounced off the canopy of leaves above him, echoing through the air. He stayed frozen, rooted to the spot as all grew silent, except for the whistling song of a few birds in the distance. But no one answered his call, nor did he hear any more sounds from that direction. Without really thinking it through, Thomas headed toward the noise he'd heard. Not bothering to hide his progress, he pushed aside branches as he walked letting them whip back to position when he passed. He squinted, willed his eyes to work in the growing darkness, wishing he had a flashlight. He thought about flashlights and his memory. Once again, he remembered a tangible thing from his past, but couldn't assign it to any specific time or place, couldn't associate it with any other person or event. Frustrating. Anybody there? He asked again, feeling a little calmer since the noise hadn't repeated. It was probably just an animal, maybe another beetle blade. Just in case, he called out, it's me, Thomas. The new guy. Well, second newest guy. He winced and shook his head, hoping now that no one was there. He sounded like a complete idiot. Again, no reply. He stepped around a large oak and pulled up short. An icy shiver ran down his back. He'd reached the graveyard. The clearing was small, maybe 30 square feet, and covered with a thick layer of leafy weeds growing close to the ground. Thomas could see several clumsily prepared wooden crosses poking through this growth, their horizontal pieces lashed to the upright ones with a splintery twine. The grave markers had been painted white, but by someone in an obvious hurry, gelled globs covered them and bare streaks of wood showed through. Names had been carved into the wood. Thomas stepped up, hesitantly, to the closest one and knelt down to get a look. The light was so dull now that he almost felt as if he were looking through black mist. Even the birds had quieted. Like they'd gone to bed for the night, and the sound of insects was barely noticeable, or at least much less than normal. For the first time, Thomas realized how humid it was in the woods. The damp air already beating sweat on his forehead, the backs of his hands. He leaned closer to the first cross. It looked fresh and bore the name Stephen, the N extra small and right at the edge because the carver hadn't estimated well how much room he'd need. Stephen, Thomas thought, feeling an unexpected but detached sorrow. What's your story? Chuck annoy you to death. He stood and walked over to another cross, this one almost completely overgrown with weeds. The ground firm at its base. Whoever it was, he must have been one of the first to die, because his grave looked the oldest. The name was George. Thomas looked around and saw there were a dozen or so.
Chapter 11 It looked as if Ben had recovered only slightly since Thomas had seen him in the homestead. He wore nothing but shorts, his whiter-than-white skin stretched across his bones like a sheet wrapped tightly around a bundle of sticks. Rope-like veins ran along his body, pulsing and green, but less pronounced than the day before. His bloodshot eyes fell upon Thomas as if he were seeing his next meal. Ben crouched, ready to spring for another attack. At some point a knife had made an appearance, gripped in his right hand. Thomas was filled with a queasy fear, disbelief that this was happening at all. Ben, Thomas looked toward the voice, surprised to see Albie standing at the edge of the graveyard, a mere phantom in the fading light. Relief flooded Thomas's body, Albie held a large bow, an arrow cocked for the kill, pointed straight at Ben. Ben, Albie repeated. Stop right now, or you ain't gonna see. Tomorrow, Thomas looked back at Ben, who stared viciously at Albie, his tongue darting between his lips to wet them. What could possibly be wrong with that kid? Thomas thought. The boy had turned into a monster. Why? If you kill me, Ben shrieked, spittle flying from his mouth, far enough to hit Thomas in the face, you'll get the wrong guy. He snapped his gaze back to Thomas. He's the shank you wanna kill. His voice was full of madness. Don't be stupid, Ben. Alby said, his voice calm as he continued to aim the arrow. Thomas just got here, ain't nothing to worry about. You're still bugging from the changing. You should have never left your bed. He's not one of us. Ben shouted. I saw him, he's, he's bad. We have to kill him. Let me gut him. Thomas took an involuntary step backward, horrified by what Ben had said. What did he mean, he'd seen him? Why did he think Thomas was bad? LB hadn't moved his weapon an inch, still aiming for Ben. You leave that to me and the keepers to figure out, shuck face. His hands were perfectly steady as he held the bow, almost as if he had propped it against a branch for support. Right now, back your scrawny butt down and get to the homestead, he'll wanna take us home, Ben said. He'll wanna get us out of the maze. Better we all jumped off the cliff. Better we tore each other's guts out. What are you talking? Thomas began. Shut your face, Ben screamed. Shut your ugly, traitorous face, Ben, Albie said calmly. I'm gonna count to three. He's bad, he's bad, he's bad. Ben was whispering now, almost chanting. He swayed back and forth, switching the knife. From hand to hand, eyes glued on Thomas. One, bad, 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 bad. Ben smiled, his teeth seemed to glow, greenish in the pale light. Thomas wanted to look away, get out of here. But he couldn't move, he was too mesmerized, too scared. Two, Albie's voice was louder, filled with warning. Ben, Thomas said, trying to make sense of it all. I'm not, I don't even know what Ben screamed, a strangled gurgle of madness, and leapt into the air, slashing out with his blade. Three, Albie shouted. There was the sound of snapping wire. The whoosh of no object slicing through the air. The sickening, what thunk of it finding a home. Ben's head snapped violently to the left, twisting his body until he landed on his stomach, his feet pointed toward Thomas. He made no sound. Thomas jumped to his feet and stumbled forward. The long shaft of the arrow stuck from Ben's cheek, the blood surprisingly less than Thomas had expected, but seeping out all the same. Black in the darkness, like oil. The only movement was Ben's right pinky finger, twitching. Thomas fought the urge to puke. Was Ben dead because of him? Was it his fault? Come on, Albie said. Baggers will take care of him tomorrow. What just happened here? Thomas thought, the world tilting around him as he stared at the lifeless body. What did I ever do to this kid? He looked up, wanting answers, but Albie was already gone, a trembling branch, the only sign he'd ever stood there in the first place. 
Thomas squeezed his eyes against the blinding light of the sun.